Welcome to Off the Press. This is the program where we take a look at the newspapers. We try to review them, make sense of it, dissect it, and then, you know, have a conversation. And with me to do so this morning is Mr. Bola Honolo Jede, who is a public affairs analyst. Good morning. It's been a while. Yeah, Welcome back. nice to be back. <laughs> Good to have you back. <laughs> and our regular almost, Dr. Femi Dou Adegoke. Uh, welcome also. Good morning. Good to see you this morning. Uh, so we have punch. Somebody wants to punch someone. We have the Vanguard, we have the Nation, we have the Guardian, and of course sports. But we shall begin this morning with the punch newspaper. It will be displayed and the big story there is Nigeria to spend 750 billion naira on fuel subsidy in 2020. That's in about, about a month next year. That's a NPC, NNPC to incur additional 300.81 billion naira payments. Marketers and Pengerson one subsidy stopped. Uh, Senate probes CBN over 20 trillion naira unremitted stamp duty. That story is on page 27. And NIS registers 61. 61,137 migrants. Reps seek illegal, illegal aliens deportation on page two of the Punch newspaper. And um, we have Buhari and three governors off to Egypt for peace forum. All right, so we have a picture story of that, but the main story is on page 11. Forgive me, fire share begs aggrieved AKT PDP members on page 21 of the Punch newspaper. And um, NHRC takes Nigeria's rights abuses to international bodies on page two. And then, well, retired major Garden Lagos uh, refinery dies in guest house. That's sad. That story is on pages four and five mm -hmm. of the Punch newspaper. I don't know why you're smiling. But <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll share, tell you. Share the good but news. <laughs> is it good? Share, well, just it's, share it. It's a story that has the guest outside of things. Oh, uh, but Maybe someone let's, let's to go rest? to the bigger story. Okay, let's go to the big story, yes. <laughs> Nigeria to spend $750 billion on fuel subsidy in Come 2020. Um, I, I, don't, I still don't understand why we are scared of taking on the big elephant. Which is? The fuel subsidy. It seems as if we're more interested in the mundane, in the routine decisions. The major challenge for leadership is its capacity to confront big issues. issues. I agree. If you run away from the big issues and you keep on picking on peccadillos, then you're not really tasking mm. uh, 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 the leadership qualities. You know, it would have been interesting to have a roadmap for exiting this subsidy and what and what exactly are we going to do mm. to be able to carry the people along, to buy into the vision and achieve what we seek to achieve. That, that looks to me like something more challenging as a leader, <clears throat> you know, than the mundane. Look, 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 look at, um, I, I was listening to, the, to someone on the TV. He was talking about how the border closure mm. has uh, helped, you know. And part of what he was saying was how it has also helped with fuel. Okay. He was talking about a particular border where there were about 60-something filling stations. stations. Mm. You know, the reason why there were do, do, where there was that kind of a number was because across the border, fuel cells, in fact, according to him, fuel cells for between 150 and 200 naira higher wow. than the oh, teas in Nigeria. Wow. That's crazy. Now, closing the border mm -hmm. cannot be a sustainable solution to that kind of a problem. Mm -hmm. That's correct, by the way. You may do it as an interventional measure. Mm -hmm. You just want to stem something. But it's not sustainable. As long as there's 200 naira on the table, mm -hmm. you probably can corrupt the entire system at some point. It's only a matter of time. Mm -hmm. Can we just think in terms of the big picture and mm -hmm. be able to confront big decisions. I know the beneficiaries of this will not like it. Mm -hmm. they, they like the status quo, mm -hmm. but you such is what leaders are made of. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so the good, good one there. So, um, Dr. Femi, do you want to intervene or we'll just move to well, the I other hope, story? Well, um, I'm just going to speak on the other side where he says the marketers, Spengler Sands, mm -hmm. want subsidies removed. Stopped. I, I just hope, the, like he said, the government or the, the National Assembly, they, they will listen and mm -hmm. yield to this call because, like he said, it's been a white elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. 
We've been dealing with it. It has almost well, uh, one ten, ten percent of our budget for 20, uh, 20, 2020. I think it's about ten point something mm. trillion, and it's right. almost a trillion naira. Mm. And then one that's just to save for me is to service some people's ego or pocket, individuals. Almost three times the budget for for capex in the in the in the, in the works ministry mm. for twenty twenty, and we're spending mm. it share, yeah. essentially sharing essentially sharing it. Yes. So yeah. that's, that, that's very good, putting it yeah. in context, yeah. really. That's the we, implication. We, we, want, we mm. want to build infrastructures, as they said, but you're not giving such amount to individuals to have in their pocket. Okay. Let's see what happens with them. Anyway, let's move to the next story. Senate probes CBN over 20 trillion naira on remitted stamp duty and NIS registered uh, 61,000. All this number, how do we even track this? <laughs> People in the first are, instance, yeah, where did the numbers come, come from? from? How did they it's arrive at the fact that we, we have, have generated number. 20 trillion? Mm -hmm. And I think the, the news said between 2013 and 2016. The question is, what was our entire budget in 2013? Mm -hmm. Maybe about 5 trillion. So it's less than. So this amount they are talking about, if you divide it over the four years, it comes to about 5 trillion from stamp duty alone. Are you suggesting that stamp duty? Could have produced as much as five trillion in those years, or we just we just like to throw numbers around. Meanwhile, it could be correct, but the right thing is to give us a basis for arriving at those numbers. Mm -hmm. The second thing I would like to comment about is most of the time we hear these um, Senate inquiries or National Assembly inquiries into some revenue issues. Um, there will be a lot of buzz around it. At a point in time, you know, just fizzle out. Yeah. And our circumstances remain the same. the same. Absolutely. So what do we I'm talk not about? impressed. That's the truth. Mm. You know, rather than even make noise about them, let's go into the habit of doing and talking. Do it and we will see it. If we have five trillion falling to our bottom line today, we will feel it. We will know it. We're going around borrowing. You can imagine what five trillion will do. Can do at this point. At this point. So it shouldn't even be a matter for talking. If there's five trillions hiding somewhere, in fact, immediately, this uh, uh, assembly should advise the president to hold on about the issue of borrowing, mm -hmm. that they can provide them five trillion. Now, for, what, for 2020, you will get five trillion. Wow. And with five trillion, that will solve the problem. It's unimaginable <laughs> how much capital expenditure we can do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, will solve, we will just strike out this whole topic immediately. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Okay, so um, Dr. Femi, do you want to weigh on uh, the immigrant, the migrants thing? Uh, Rep. Six uh, aliens, um, illegal aliens deportation. We seem to have a lot of non-Nigerians, or is it just me seeing them around? No, 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 no. Uh, you're right. There seem to be an influx on yes, a daily. About um, we know. One, our border has been porous. Two, there's been so much unrest along the uh, neighboring countries mm -hmm. over the past years. And Nigeria seems to be... It's the, just open to all. Yes. Nigeria seems to be where everybody comes to and do all kinds of uh, businesses, all kinds of uh, work to survive. Mm -hmm. And they now work here and go back home and come back because our, our border is porous. Um, that figure might not be 100% correct from the NIS, but the truth is that there's so much immigrant in our system. Before we came on here, we were talking about it, and I can, I can tell you that you see a lot of them in Lagos now. Most of the Okada riders and mm -hmm. Kikemarua riders Security and securities and, yeah, at personnel. homes, they are mostly not Nigerians. And even the cobblers, you know. Yeah, the they are either Nigerians or Malians. I've come across them. I speak a bit of Hausa, but they can't even communicate in Hausa language. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's huge, and like he mentioned off the header, even if we found them, if we're not going to deport them, we need to document. Proper documentation. Yeah, and we need to have what are they doing, where they stay. Mm -hmm. you, you understand how did they get into the country? And then if mm -hmm. there's supposed to be proper documentation for them, we do it. And if anyone that is not doing anything, just laying about, we can deport back to the Yeah, because, I mean, it's really, what for me, it's worrying sometimes when you, say, you notice a lot of these people and you're not sure who they are, what they are doing, how yeah. they even, you know, got into the country. So I agree that there should be proper uh, documentation. I think we're going to leave this paper now in the interest of time. Sorry, gentlemen, we'll move to Vanguard. Uh, is there something you're eyeing over here?
I said, no, let's let's Okay, not okay, that. all right. <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to talk about the the topic that says okay, just talk about the it. lawlessness. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, the editorial. The the, the editorial. Mm. I think it's um, it's quite bold. Um, there are there are because yesterday was a National Human Rights Day or yeah. something like that. Yes, yeah, Human Rights Day. Yeah, it was a global human rights. Global day. Okay. human rights day. So I, I so yeah, I, I, it's proper to look at all these kind of mm. things. Uh, the problem with power a lot of times is that you don't get people telling the truth to them. Uh, around them. People around them tend to just, most of the time, tell them what they think they want to hear Thank or what will endear it. them mm -hmm. to those leaders. So both things like this, I'm, I'm not saying this is 100% uh, the way it should have been presented, mm -hmm. but they bring up salient facts that if the leaders get to lay hand on this, he will be able to pick one or two things mm -hmm. and then ask himself some fundamental questions. questions. Yeah. And hopefully, in the process of asking those questions, we may be able to get an improvement on the issues that have been raised mm. uh, as far as lawlessness or disobedience to court orders yeah. and issues around that. Uh, mm, there's uh, been a bit of that. Really. There's been a bit of that. Mm. And it's, it's worth our attention and it's worthy of the president's attention as well. Yeah, I agree. I agree to that. Okay, so we'll move to Vanguard now. Buhari appoints Adamu CBN uh, Deputy Governor and AMCON Chairman on page 9 of the Vanguard. Showore, what we told DSS. Uh, Vanguard publisher kicks, kicks against death penalty for hate speech on page 8. Wiki tackles Oshomale at Abuja book launch. That story is on page 5. And CBN to raise bank's loan deposit ratio to 70% on page 19. Already displayed there on your screens. And show arrest, rearrest. Uh, reps to probe DSS over invasion of courtroom. Say one arm of government can't intimidate another and fear uh, NAS may be invaded someday by DSS operatives. Task Buhari on adherence to rule of law. Why I didn't attend Wally Shoinka uh, Center's award. That's uh, the vice president speaking there. Now, 1.4 million AKT residents engage in open defecation. Mm. Oh, you silent. Wow. Yeah, yeah, open yeah. defecation. Yeah. That's according to UNICEF. Quite unhealthy. And then um, International Human Rights Day. You're right. 70 million Nigerians face challenges of education and health. That's again according to UN on page 9. And Buhari's uh, ministers to reps, why Nigeria must borrow again $22.7 billion uh, now. It has to happen now, not tomorrow. Okay, that's on page 41. I'll take 25 years to reduce doctors' uh, shortage in Nigeria. It will, rather take uh, 25 years. That's according to the Nigerian Medical Association there. On page 10, police parade main suspect in murder of Kogi PDP woman leader. This is good news as far as I'm concerned. Mm. Well, that story is on page 6. Let's begin. Which one do we want to start with? It seem to be so uh, many stories on the vanguard this morning. Yes, quite a big story. Yeah. Show arrest, rearrest, and whichever one. And the invasion of the courtroom. Yeah. Uh, I, th I think it's, it's, it's more of an overflowed matter right now. But the fact that it has not been resolved will keep it in the news for mm. a while. Uh, yeah. it, it, it comes across as if this is part of what Punch was referring to in that editorial. No, yeah. uh, what looks, there was an invasion of the courtroom. Um, DSS was fingered. DSS has said, oh, it's not our mm -hmm. men and all the rest. These are all. Show mm -hmm. It would have been nice for because, to manage. Okay, you know so. what? We have very clear videos about the event of that day. Mm. Thankfully. Thankfully. So it would have been nice to have some public identification of those faces. I remember vividly a gentleman wearing is he an orange? I mean, kaftan. Or, kaftan. Mm. So somebody said, okay, this guy wearing kaftan is Adamu. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, he he to works this with uh, A and B company. He believes is a show, is a show rest friend, mm -hmm. and then identify those faces mm -hmm. so that we can put that to rest. That indeed there was no SSS guy mm -hmm. that invaded the courtroom, mm -hmm. and that is more effective than a simple denial by by a press release. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't work. It's even more you practical, are, really. It's more practical, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and and then. The issues at stake are still unresolved, as we speak. Are I'm there no that. way to disentangle this matter and legally sort it out? Mm -hmm. US has commented about it. EU has commented about it. Sarah. Nigerians have commented there is a, a planned protest somewhere down the road. 
Yeah. We should be able to resolve this issue without creating all the mess. We mm. don't want to get to that and say, oh, there will be no protest. And eventually there is another protest. And probably people got injured. You mm. might even have loss of life. Why do we want to play? Get to that extent. Chess with uh, people's lives. It doesn't make sense. When is the matter that can actually be resolved without violence? Mm. That's a good big point there. <laughs> I want to add to that. Okay, please go ahead. You see, on this court invasion, mm -hmm. And the National Assembly coming out now. Mm, they, are, they, they are afraid they could be. For me, no, they, that's why I would take us back, I think it was last year or year before. The DSS invaded the National Assembly. Yeah, there was that story, yes. August. They barricaded the yes. National Assembly. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And we all kept quiet. They ever, no, nothing was done. So they are afraid no, of a repeat. Something was done, mm. but not by NAS. In fact, it would be right to say that the kind of intervention we had when that happened. Mm -hmm. yeah. We had uh, somebody who was sitting in for the president. That, and they took that's an action. Going. That's, where, that's, where I, that's exactly where I was going. The vice president took an action. The NAS kept quiet. Now it's mm -hmm. gone to the uh, judiciary. So the three arms of government, mm. the executive is actually undermining the authority of the remaining two. That's what, is, that's what it is. So them coming out, and then Palano has come out to say they were at least five DSS members mm -hmm. in the courtroom. And they have the pictures and videos of them. Did he say in the courtroom or well within no, the court premises? No, he said premises? in the courtroom. Hmm. And he even claimed that they apologized yeah, he, to, the court, uh, to the judge. To him, the, so why are you saying he was showerless people? Showerless so people could have had their own designed way, because I'm not speaking for showerless. But the truth is that, like we said here yesterday, the DSSS, they lost their tact. Even if she wanted to get out of court mm. and saw them and ran back, should you, you could have just gone and wait for him outside. He will not live in the court forever. <laughs> he wouldn't live in the court forever. <laughs> <laughs> that just caught my attention. No, we, he doesn't, we don't intend, well, the intention is not that he will live there forever. Anyways, like uh, we are saying, hopefully things will be sorted properly. We do things in the right way and save our image also. So let's move to uh, any other story here. CBN to raise banks loan to deposit ratio to 70%. 70%. The implication of that is that banks are expected to create more loans. Um, on the face of it, that is a very good thing because it means that the real sector, now they've been discouraged from lending just to government. They're saying, mm. go out there and lend to, to the people. people. So if you help to stimulate the economy, people who need funding should be able to get, get more us. funding, mm. as, as the case may be. But at the same time, on the regulator side, we have to watch the numbers. Okay. When you push people out to go and create credit and mass like that, we also need to be cautious, both on the side of the bank and the regulator, that we're not creating potentially bad loans. Okay. Because along the line, if we create a lot of bad loans by virtue of the pressure on them to go and just go out there and mm. create loans, if we do that, the system will pay dearly for it. Mm. Mm. So there's a red, red light. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a balancing act. Mm. It's good to go out, all out there and create this asset, but we must you create quality. You have to create, create the monitoring asset. and evaluating. Mm. Okay, good intervention there. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm going to ask you because I think you have something to do with Ekiti. 1.4 million Ekiti residents <laughs> engage in open defecation <laughs> by UNICEF. How yeah. can UNICEF be telling us, how can we be doing this to ourselves? No, but, but it's not only Ekiti. But uh, Ekiti is the one in We're, question. Yeah, because maybe 1.4 have, million. Have, yes. What, uh, <laughs> That's a lot. They have about... They don't have toilets. Ekiti has, I think Ekiti has almost 3 million people living there. So, so almost that, half of them this practice, isn't good. <laughs> practice open defecation. But the truth is that I'm not refuting that. I think it was in 2016. I don't understand. Is it people don't have... I'm not taking words out of your mouth. So they build without toilets? What's the problem? Even or in Lagos. Right even in Lagos, people build without toilets. So go to 2016. Let's, what, what? As far back as 2016, the former Minister for Environment, we, we worked with them and we had a strategy to <sighs> curb open defecation. But those documents are just there, sitting on the shelf. No, implica no Im implementation. So the truth is that today, this year, Nigeria was declared as a number one country with the practice of open defecation. This isn't funny. This That's morning, we have where, this gastro, morning on my way here this morning, something. on my way here this morning, I saw people doing it. When you're coming through Marina, Houta Marina, under the bridge, I saw one or two people doing it. Can't this under be Under the stopped? bridge. Like, yes. you what, see, what can be done? What that, can uh, be done to stretch, stop yeah. it? From, uh, if, if you climb the uh, bridge, 
towards a, I've forgotten what they call that place. Almost all the, in the morning, yeah. almost I, I all the electric poles. Yeah. All through to Marina, there's somebody hanging on to that oh, pole my word. and doing it. No, yeah. let's not have the imagination. But you this know. is really bad. Like, so, can't it so be it's not We have... Where, where are the public toilets? Where, 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 where do these people toilet? go? If we have housing problems, yeah, we're going to have things like that. Yes. Yes. Even the existing, apart from so the fact indicative. that there are people who don't even have a house, house at all, mm. people house bath yeah. on Marina early in the morning on the road. That the, the, the Marina so itself. So it's pointing yeah. towards a more bigger issue. So it's a, yeah. it's a, there's a bigger issue mm. on the line in it. And to cure and it, we must kill that foundation. Yeah. That's unfortunate. I mean, let's not talk about let's it again. Leave so, let's, let's leave the vacation. <laughs> oh, it's not good at all to be on our papers. Anyways, let's go to the nation uh, newspaper. Uh, plenty. Judge defies PDP over Lagos crisis on page 43, case for hearing on Friday. Governors to federal governments bring 49 billion naira oil thieves to book. Okay, that's on page 8. Police parade killers of PDP women leader suspect confesses to arson. That's on page 4. Mm -hmm. And Senate probes 20 trillion on remittance stamp duty cash money. Electricity workers begin strike. That's on the front page, as you can see, displayed, uh, mm -hmm. but continued on page 8. Oshamale Wiki trade punches over polls and rights, and APC, PDP accuse each other of hypocrisy. I'm about to laugh, but I'll hold it. Ekiti Taraba top human rights friendly survey, and NDIC, Nigerian Bank's table. That's on page 11. And I, that, that picture is quite interesting. Oh, the one of uh, Oshomole and, and the secondos. secondos. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even going to. I'm not even going to. <laughs> I'm not even going to. I'm not ah. seeing the picture really. <laughs> um, well, okay. So can we talk about the police parade killers of PDP? It looks like it's good news. Uh, uh, it's, it's, PDP it's, woman yeah. lead, women leader. Why is it women's one? Who was killed in Kogi State. Yes, uh, it's, it's good to be able to make arrests to bring the perpetrators to book. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I wonder if this, if it is just enough mm -hmm. that the foot soldiers are the people made to pay fully for this, mm -hmm. or did was there somebody at their back? Because when you ask yourself, what exactly does this guy have to gain? Mm -hmm. Just Probably not much. So somebody mm. is foiling mm. something that led yeah. to something. Mm. And it's not enough if all we do is to just deal with the final guy without being able to have recourse to the people that we worked for. Absolutely. All right. Uh, we'll just, we have just one minute. Yeah, yeah. I'll allow you to talk. No, all I, I want to talk about electricity. Electricity, yeah. yes. Please go ahead, talk yeah. about it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, I read that story earlier today in the, on, my, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the internet. Okay. And the question was, the workers wrote to the minister uh, stating their grievances mm -hmm. and giving him 21 days. To and do what? Their pension, their pay, their pension has not been remitted to the pension managers. So they are being hold. Mm. And they have given 21 days ultimatum and since 20, 20, 25th of November. Mm -hmm. And that's about 16 days gone. And up till now, nothing has happened. The minister has not even acknowledged the letter, <laughs> has not even written to them. I think he should have written to them, even if they're going to the threatening strike, mm -hmm. engage them, begin to discuss with them, to buy time. We're going into festive period. Yeah. So they are telling us now to go and get our jerry cans to begin to buy fuel. And, and Start diesel. storing on fuel. Yes. That's, no. That doesn't look good at all. Mm, it doesn't sound mm. good. It doesn't sound good at all. But I mean, it, 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 there's just so little that people can do at some point where you push them to a certain level. I'm not saying it's the best approach, but anyways, uh, that's unfortunate. So can we just take one story here? Senate's uh, big... Let's take this. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, we can't, <laughs> we can't take anyone. Uh, but so here is where we're going to call it a wrap. Uh, thank you, Mr. Oloje Day. And it's good to be here. Femi, thank you. Oh, it's always good to have you uh, come to do this with us. And this is where we're going to call it a wrap for Off the Press. Uh, we'll do this the same time tomorrow, 8.30, here on Plus TV Africa. And I am Amaka Okoye. Have yourselves again a good day. Mm -hmm.